Welcome. Well, I'm back and I see I've missed a beautiful geomagnetic storm. In fact, the strongest geomagnetic storm we've had since I started giving these reports. As you can see from the background movie here, the Earth's magnetic field is being twisted and turned all over the place as a result of this storm. But I did leave you with five M flares and a whole bunch of C flares. And, and since I left, we've only had 19 C flares, which I suppose is quite impressive in and of itself. Most of the events seem to be from region 1263 although 1267 has produced a couple of them as well. We have four numbered regions on the disk. Region 1261 is on the west limb and will be gone by tomorrow. The leading part of region 1263 seems to have decayed, but that may be due to foreshortening effects as it too approaches the west limb. However, there seems to be significant growth in the trailing part of the region where there are new spots appearing. Region 1268 is a series of small spots just trailing region 1263. Region 1267 in the Southern Hemisphere is the other region that has been producing some level of activity. However, there seems to be a new set of spots growing up ahead of it. Is this a new region or part of the same region? When we look at the magnetic data, I think you'll agree that it's probably a new region. And there is another small new region coming over the southeast limb that is worthy of keeping our eye on. In the Sunspot movie from the HMI instrument, I'd like you to keep an eye on the development of Region 1263, particularly the training part of the region. However, in the Magnetic movie, I'd like you to keep an eye on the area out ahead of Region 1267 and see the development right at the end of the sequence of a new region. There, do you see what I mean? <coughs> in the Transition Region movie, I'd like you to keep an eye on the ejector coming out of Region 1261 on the west limb and also the prominence on the northeast limb that looks ready to lift off. In the low temperature corona movie I would like you to compare the whole of the northern hemisphere with the south. Notice that there are many regions in the two hemispheres but the ones in the northern hemisphere are all larger and better developed and more dynamic the ones in the south are all smaller and weaker and less well developed. This is the imbalance between the two hemispheres that I've been talking about since the onset of the new cycle. In the Soho coronagraph movies we see a whole series of coronal mass ejections off the southwest limb. These seem to be associated with that dynamic activity that I pointed out in the region 1261. In the last 24 hours we see that the density of the solar wind has remained relatively constant. However, the temperature has been varying all over the place and the velocity increased about uh, 20 hours ago and then has since been steadily declining. The high energy electron flux after taking a precipitous dive a couple of days ago has been steadily increasing and is now at relatively high levels. We can see the trailer end of the major proton event associated with the flares that we had earlier but the flux seems to now be returning to background levels. Now I'm going to play a movie of the Earth's magnetic field on the left and the pressure of the solar wind on the Earth's magnetosphere on the right. I'm just going to let it play and let you enjoy it but just look how much it changes over the last 24 hours. Isn't that spectacular? Now let's take a look at the uh, auroral zone and see that it is relatively quiet at the moment and the KP index that was at a high storm level 48 hours ago is now returning to more quiet levels. So in summary then, the x-ray background is at the B3 level, the sunspot number has dropped to 85, the radio sun intensity is at 110 solar flux units, the solar wind speed has risen to 530 kilometers per second, the solar wind density is at 3 protons per cubic centimeter, and geospace conditions have been very active over the last 48 hours. So my forecast for the next 24 hours is that there's a high chance of getting more C flares. An M flare is still possible, though I think the chances are decreasing. And I think the chance of getting an X flare is quite remote. Sunspot number should ease lower. There's still a very good chance of getting chrono mass ejections. Solar wind speed should ease lower over the next 24 hours but the chances of getting a major geomagnetic storm are quite poor. In longer term we're not expecting any major regions over the east limb, although there does seem to be indication of some small regions on or near the east limb in the x-ray movies. 
I'm sorry that this video is a bit rushed, but I uh, got back late from my trip and the weather here is pretty bad, so I wanted to get this done before the thunderstorms struck. Anyway, so that's it for today. Tomorrow's video will also probably be late because I've got some seminars to attend uh, at NASA tomorrow. Uh, so probably look for it tomorrow afternoon. But otherwise, keep safe. Bye for now.